and this hangout is on air is live this hangout is with something yeah well uh, good afternoon it is after lunchtime still trying to wake up all right so anyhow heck with all that crap wanted to talk about guitars um don't do that much on here usually i get caught up in religion and politics i mean why not it's guitar community right so <laughs> hey look even if, if you love it or you hate it it should somehow influence the way you vibrato or what notes you choose whether you're angry or sad or pissed off or happy whatever the hell the deal is you know you have some effect or make you think a little bit and that should affect your lyrics or give you something to write about or something that's why i talk about religion and politics to help us out as musicians you know at least try okay so um cheap guitar equipment it it just it's funny to me the video itself i don't see much on it but i noticed that i lost three subs since i did my last video no you know i could be shitty playing whatever you know I, i'm not used to playing well whatever i make a lot of mistakes but i think the overall sound was good I, I will admit i learned something though when listening to it probably because i wasn't listening to tone because tone certainly wasn't there as far as what i would like to hear but i did notice that i just keep moving from one thing to the other and of course eventually i play the same licks anyhow i play because i only know so many licks but the problem was that i didn't repeat things my phrasing and then just change it up so slightly and it's on my understanding how you should do that. So I got that out of it. And maybe because I, I might have noticed it all the more because I wasn't listening to this fabulous tone I had. So it had its place for me. Uh, the other thing is, it's an autistic guy that comes around now and then. He's a good guy. And uh, he likes playing, you know, that kind of thing. I don't think, you know, it doesn't come from a lot of money or anything. And so, you know, he has what he has. And um, he does he does have a karaoke amp, a small little karaoke amp. You know, well, actually, it's, I think it might have a 10, at least 10, maybe a 12 in it. Some cheap, solid-state karaoke thing. But I know he's brought that by and I played through it, and, you know, it actually works okay. And he has a Zoom multi-effects pedal. Obviously, that I think that would have probably sounded better than the uh, cheap little um, Dan Electro clone thing, or whatever you want to call it. You know, you plug into the guitar, you know, strange little amp. Even if you call it an amp, whatever, you know, it's all relative. But it, but it does produce sound, you know. Uh, same with a honey tone that produces sound. You could play through it, you know, you could if that's all you had. Uh, the guitar, well, you know, if you were to level the frets on it, and uh, that would probably be the biggest thing. Re level the frets, straighten the neck. The neck had some warp in it, which is normal this time of year. If, but it probably, that guitar probably hasn't been set up in years, a number of years. It has fairly heavy strings on it that you put on it. Uh, I'm guessing maybe at least 11s, if not 12s. Um, I don't know. Point was a uh, cheap ass pickups. I think it's a hundred dollar guitar or less. About reality is, so it's still playable. Yeah, I noticed uh, there were a couple of notes to try to play up high because it, the bridge is kind of low, and so it was fretting out there. But then with the warp, the action was a little high, and like say the third through. 10th 12th fret or something then all of a sudden <laughs> it gets low up <laughs> like around the 15th fret or so you know it gets really low so uh what the hell you know the point is you still play it you know anyhow i'm going to take a look at uh the hangout thing here really see if low. there's any comments so, or uh, what the hell you know hey jimmy t yeah so kind of my point i guess behind it um one thing was was to show the guy who who owned a guitar and a little mini amp was that you you can use it and if that's all you had you could do some eqing to it hey dan 
then you you know you could do some uh, just basic EQing and what what I had noticed with that I did add a touch of slapback delay not, nothing fancy just what came into program built in so I added a touch of delay uh, he ran the camera so the camera was kind of moving all over the place and stuff well here whatever it was fine cheap camera whatever in the low light yeah it kind of worked you know blurry whatever who cares uh, and, and that the idea of it was just to show that you can get a sound out of something so a little bit of delay touch of reverb and uh, and then I think the biggest thing, which, you know, the normal effects you have to use, you know, I mean, well, if you want any kind of something that you're going to put in a mix of a recording, then at least a touch of slapback delay and in a fairly dead room with a close-up mic, I think a little reverb is helpful. Um, equalization was tough because there's no lows there, no, not to speak of. And I did think that I did better instead of using a large condenser diaphragm before when I played with it with a an SM57 and actually mic'd up on the back of the thing. I thought it sounded a little better. Hey, Ben Coombs and Dale Palmer. You know, so I think it sounded better miking it from behind the amp, the speaker, because that little tinny speaker is just I thought I got a better tone. That's just my my thought on it. But I just used what I had sitting here and very mic I'm talking into now, so that's what I just used, you know. Um, so anyhow, I didn't have lows really to work with. I, had I used the SM57 and mic the back, I think it would have had a little more in the low range to work with. But what I did have, and I guess you could get real technical about it. You could, I could have put a uh, large condenser in front of it and then made sure that they were in phase with each other and mixed them. You know, that... that might have even given a maybe an okay sound. I don't know. I doubt it. But uh, so I had low mids to work with and boosted them a bit. And oddly enough, I did boost a little bit on the highs, which I didn't expect. Um, maybe somewhere around 1 to 2K, somewhere in there, 3K maybe. Yeah, like 1 to 3K, somewhere in there, I, I boosted just a tad bit. Um, that was what I heard, what I thought I wanted to hear. Um, and then I went to cut some of the mids out, and I noticed that if I used a wide band, it nearly disappeared, like nearly killed the sound, at least a whole lot, because that's pretty much all it's producing is in that area. So I made a pretty narrow band and just cut a few areas to try to cut the cheapness out. And that whole hell of a lot I could do. It still sounds like a cheap little amp, but better than what it does just listening to it, sitting there playing. And I, I talked about it being a honey tone killer. It's not that. They, they, they both sound cheap to me. You know, both junk. But if that's all you had, you could do a recording with it. Kind of has a cool nasally sound. I mean, hell, Bob Dylan was famous. You know, why not make your guitar sound like that? You know? And really, really, I think in its right place with a rougher, cruder kind of blues sound, I think it actually could have fit. I really do. Um, when you're saying, what was I using? Just a graphic EQ, you know, uh, built into, uh, what the heck was it? Uh, Sony Vegas, just their factory preset thing. So just basic equalization, you know, but you know, when you look at the pickups, uh, kind of thin, weak ceramic, which yeah, I'm not, not against ceramic. I mean, you, you can have, uh, Bill Lawrence or, uh, you know, I guess he designed pickups for the uh, uh, later the GNL, some of the GNL guitars. I believe he played part in that, if I'm not mistaken. Um, I don't know, but anyhow, anyhow, uh, the point is, is just a crummy sounding guitar, or is it? Or does or is a Vox a cheap guitar? Maybe Voxes have low output. Pickups. I don't know. I don't like how ceramic, whatever. I, you know, my point is, if you can get a sound out of it, that's what matters. Hey, Sonia. And and so, you know, that was my reason for doing it. Um, to just see what what did just a crummy guitar do that's set up really bad, hard to play, ch 
cheesy amp. I mean, it's a joke of an amp. But that was my interest in it. You know, what what is it capable of? Uh, actually, one little part, I did play some clean notes, and I thought, you know, I wish I would have done more of that. I think it even sounded better that way. Um, got confused with all the buttons. I mean, you have a power button, uh, um, a distortion button, and a volume knob. You know, so no wonder I got confused. Forgot what I was doing at the beginning. <laughs> but, actually, I'm kind of used to seeing them on an amplifier instead of plugged into the guitar. <laughs> but but it was uh, it was fun. You know, I, I think it was fun. So what the heck? I don't have a lot to offer really on it. Um. I, I do think, though, that if you really thought about it, you thought about, like, you know, where would, like, say, like, a nasally sounding, like, kind of dobro sound or something fit in to a mix of a song? I mean, I mean, it's kind of weird when you think about, like, dumbles and certain voxes and stuff. Uh, I, I know that I know voxes are known for having this, like, ring to them, but there's also a mid-rangey walk to them or whatever, a walk, Yeah. Mid rangey hunk, uh, certainly sweet and pretty, and of course a dumble. Comparing, comparing a uh, the sound of a Dan Electro honey tone to a dumble is pretty ridiculous. I understand that. And no, I'm not saying they're the same. But what is interesting is, say, like you're playing through a Fender Twin Reverb, or a Roland Jazz Chorus, or. Um, you know, your typical metal setup through a, uh, I don't know, new old Marshall, whatever, you know, uh, some newest rectifier, triple rectifier, whatever the hell they're doing with Mesa Boogie and whatever, whoever's building white, you know, to get that real big sound where um, you hear everything kind of thing. Well, the twin reverb, the Roland Jazz Course, and that kind of big, big sound, um, obviously, it, it, it's very different than, let's say, the Dumble kind of sound, where it's you have this very pronounced mid-range, and obviously a much fuller sound than the little cheesy amp. But mic'd up right and working with it some. No, it's not going to sound like a Dumble. I'm not claiming that. But it might kind of hit somewhere in the frequency range and idea that people have when they use those kind of amps that are more mid-range focused. Damn, I, I should have been drinking whiskey instead of coffee talking like this. It's pretty horrible. <laughs> but, but um, so let's say like extreme, you know, and maybe it's like taking a dumbbell and cutting your bass and treble off and presence everything completely and just having this wall and putting a two-inch speaker in it. Well, and tearing all the tubes out and replacing it with solid state and putting it in a plastic box and uh it's only like a big um yeah yeah well anyhow mid-range focused i guess is my point junk versus some of the most beautiful amps in the world you know i just think it has its place if you used it right just my thought you know Oh, Laney amps. Yeah, yeah, I liked old Laney amps. Uh, I've uh, played through Laney and high watts, and I've had some high watts that like hissed like crazy. They were just like, <laughs> like real super, uh, real noisy, um, but incredible, incredible chimey highs. And I uh, don't remember Laney's quite sounding that way, at least in my ears that I remember. Um, played a lot through more through Marshalls and that kind of thing, but uh, because you didn't see as many of those, you know, our sound cities and oranges and you know, stuff like that, you know, at least years ago. But um, yeah, Laney's and High Watts were both, uh, you know, fairly popular, those and uh, yeah, I liked them, I liked Laney's. Laney made some neat stuff. Yeah, Dale, that's the thing, you know. Um, I mean, mic straight up, it would have sound, it sounded okay. I think and if I spent more time on miking, it would have sounded even better. You know, I, I, seriously, it would have been better than just putting this mic in front of it, you know. Um, you know, putting it, taking, 
it off, not having it aiming right straight at the speaker, off axis, maybe in the side where, like I said, on the back, it actually sounded, I thought, better in some ways, but I don't know. It's cheap, you know. Um, but, but I guess my, my point is that, you know, a lot of times people just don't have much, you know, and, uh, you know, whether it's a decision to keep your car running, buy a new battery, wiper blades, whatever to pass inspection and the cost of inspection and everything else, you know, maybe you can barely even afford to buy a guitar. So I don't know. What do you do then? You know, you're just barely getting by, and maybe you can't even afford that hundred dollar guitar, but you do it because you want to have a guitar. You know, you got a fifteen twenty dollar amp, and that's all you can afford. But you love music. Excuse me, I, bur I burped there, thinking about cheap guitars. It's like uh, freaking eating cucumbers or pickles. It comes up on you. Know, never mind. Um, <laughs> no, no, but but um. But actually, speaking of like the, the cheap karaoke amp, something I think he got at a yard sale. It's the same guy. I forget where he got it, but it, it uh, that actually doesn't sound too bad. Put a decent little pedal in front of it or something, and yeah, not too damn bad. Actually, a Zoom Effects pedal going into that probably would give you some okay sounds, I would think. The one-string wash dub bass. There you go. Yeah, that's right, Mick. You know, that's the thing. I mean, you know, I mean, I, I've always been around guitars and more so in the 80s, 90s, somewhere in the 2000s, you know, buying and selling. If I didn't like something, I just sell it off or, you know, trade it, you know. You, you know, you had people coming around in and out of the shop all the time. So if there was something that didn't fit what I wanted and somebody else liked it, I could trade, get something different, whatever. It didn't have to cost me money. And that was that was a cool thing. So I had the ability to play with nice things. I still like having nice things. Um, I mean, I, I'd rather eat at Wendy's or at McDonald's maybe or Arby's or something than go to a nice restaurant or something. I'd rather have a nice guitar than have that, you know, go out and party it up and buying like five, ten dollar beers and stuff at a club or something. I mean, what the hell, I'd much rather have a guitar. That's why I roll my own cigarettes. I mean, I should quit, honestly, but obviously. But, but, if I had a choice between cigarettes and guitars, holy hell, I'd have a real problem. I think I'm addicted to both, but that shows the problem of quitting smoking. Holy hell, I can't figure that out. It's a real problem, I guess. Hey, what's happening, Wild Art? Well, yeah, that's the whole point, Wildheart, and, and and there's nothing wrong with somebody being poor, you know, and, and I think, you know, it's interesting when you look at blues and kind of rough kind of country music and that kind of thing, hell, even jazz, you know, for that matter, you know, like B.B. King, I'm sure he didn't start out on that 355, I mean, I, somebody gave it to him or something, you know, or he was making money by then, I don't know what how that all happened, but I'm sure as hell guarantee he, what, he didn't start on that, you know. Use what you got, you know. Yeah, yeah, I got to find my vape machine somewhere around. I got one. Got a couple. Uh, Kanger Tech. That's, I was trying to tell uh, Ben recently what the heck it was I have. I just remembered the uh, the top is a Kanger Tech. And uh, I've got a couple of those long, little, narrow batteries for it. I should have an 18650 or something with it, but whatever. It'll work if I can find it. It's laying around here somewhere. Well, oh, okay, the 10-watt Black Star. Well, you know, Dale, that's where I think things really change, you know, is uh, when you get into that kind of stuff. But but even with that, though, I mean, even with, with some of the real little Chizo amps, uh, you know, hundred bucks or so. You know, fifty, hundred bucks, whatever. You know, it. it I remember, I had a, uh, a Fender. Uh, the hell did they call that? Champion One Ten. The clean sound wasn't too good. It broke up a little too quick. But the distorted channel, if I just 
brought the up around oh maybe like 10 o'clock or so to distortion 10 11 o'clock or so the drive and then adjusted the volume i played that with 110 it came with and uh remember playing that at a few open mic nights and guys like flipping out over it in fact i, I remember uh playing it at one place where uh the guy had a uh he had a, a super reverb that was cut down for two tens instead of four tens and uh, it was an old black face and somebody had put two Kendrick speakers in it. Another guy had some like real cool, like there was a couple boogies sitting there and I brought that thing up and set it on a chair <laughs> and beating up this, playing this old beat up fake strat thing. I mean, it was like a squire kind of thing. I put good pickups in and did up. And anyhow, I just remember this guy staring in the back of my amp. I said, what are you, what are you doing? Like, what are you looking? He said, I'm looking for the tubes. I said, you know, that's solid state. You know, that amp sounded great. You know, it really did. So I don't think you have to spend a lot of money to get good sound, you know. Yeah, Sonia, yeah, I, I think, you know, um, my, my guess would be that's about the uh, vape machines catching fire and stuff. I mean, my guess would be it, it's probably from people using unprotected batteries, you know. I, I would think. I, I could be wrong, you know, because... The unprotected batteries are pretty cheap, and I think sometimes people overcharge them. And I'm not positive on that, but yeah, I, I wouldn't use uh, an unprotected battery. Yeah, you know, with one battery, it's probably not too bad. When you put two together, you can run into. Well, if one, I guess, is charged higher than the other, and if you're mixing things, yeah, I guess you can really have some problems. But yeah, I wouldn't do that. You know. Oh, there you go. Yeah, and like Ben Coombs and uh, unregulated, you know, the unregulated batteries, I guess. I mean, I play around with flashlights. I don't I don't really do much with, but, and that's very important with flashlights. I mean, the last thing you want to be doing is carrying around a pocket bomb, you know. And, and you know, so like like with this thing, the hell is in this thing? It's like maybe a half of a 18650, but it's an AW. I don't know. It's a decent battery. I mean, there's uh, power, keep power, I don't know, a bunch of companies, you know. Uh, with one battery, like I said, it's probably not a big deal, but if you put two of them together, you can run into issues. Anyhow, but I got to have my light, you know. Got to be able to see. I'm getting old. Dang on it. Well, wet long, you know, I, I think it, uh, one thing you're not supposed to inhale it, some people might. You know, maybe smoke it like a pipe. You know, let, me, let me think. And it drives me kind of nuts, so I'm not inhaling. I didn't take it into my lungs, but I just pulled it back into my throat a little bit. Then blow it out my nose. Blow it out your nose. This bowl's pretty shot. Feel a little harshness there, though, a little bit. But I, th I think if you're not inhaling it, probably not a big deal. That'd be my guess, you know, with, with the vape thing. I definitely have to Load up another bowl on this. Just puff on here and there and try to cut back on smoking a little bit. Usually I keep my cigarette tubes in another room so that I have to at least get up and go get them. Unless I'm doing a hangout, then I grab like four or five and set them here. Cause get me through the anxiety of the hangout. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I don't know. So, I, so I'm kind of thinking about trying... Uh, you can smoke my lungs and get high. <laughs> yeah. Well, when you die, you know, you just donate them and they can make peyote buttons out of them or something. Oh, George, that's bad, bro. I, I just watching a thing with Clinton, you know, going on about border control. Crazy stuff. Holy hell. I think politically our freaking world's just freaking destructing itself 
Or people who just pull back and just look at issues, you know. I mean, I mean, you know, maybe I'd change my mind too if I did more of that. But try, you know. Yeah, yeah, nihilist. I know what you mean. You know, try not to. And some cigars are real smooth. You know, I kind of like the backwoods. They're cheap cigars. You know, but what, what, four buck, five bucks a pack or something for five of them. Pretty smooth though. You know, I can inhale those. Not not too bad. You know, I've smoked some big cigars. They're supposed to be pretty good. But there's something about the, um, I want to say molecules. I can't think of the, the right word here. And I think a cigarette burns really because the tip gets so hot and it's small. I think it really gets super, super fine. And that's part of what I think makes it easier to inhale. Where a pipe is pretty freaking harsh generally. And a cigar, I think, stays a lot cooler on the tip than a cigarette. You know, I think I, I think that's part of what might make the molecule smaller that you're inhaling. And I don't know for sure. <laughs> Not that, that funny one. Not less. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> but but um. Yeah, I wish I could remember what other uh, dang on tips I got uh, or tanks or whatever the hell they're called. You know, I can't remember. I put the dang on box somewhere. I don't know where the hell I put it. Otherwise, I'd be trying it. And I'm sure I got some vape juice around somewhere. I don't know. Yeah, I think they do, Sonia. I think they do add some chemicals. Um, it's kind of weird, you know, when you think about it. Um, gotten some natural tobaccos that I didn't like as much. You know, some are okay. I kind of like the idea. Added sugar and maple syrup and <laughs> whatever. Cocoa powder and I don't know what all they put in there, you know. Sometimes it tastes good, though. I don't know. Yeah, and formaldehyde, I mean, that, that way you're preserving your body. It's like, hell, they used to put BHT in, uh, I think it was that, um, I think they were all natural except for BHT and um, shredded wheat. Uh, make you live longer. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. I might, I might give the, uh, I might give that a try again with vaping, and I don't know. I guess if I get the right fittings, I can make my own box. I mean, actually, the batteries that I had, they're okay. They just don't hold a charge as long. You know, they're thin and easy. I mean, it's like carrying a pen around. Pretty small. Now I want a cigarette after thinking about all this daggone nicotine. Could add nicotine to my, uh, you know, you think about it. You just get up in the morning, have some nicotine in your coffee. So you got your nicotine, your caffeine, put some milk in there, maybe a shot of whiskey to give you a kickstart in the morning. What else would I need? Well, you need your milk. You need some protein. Maybe dump some of that, uh, the hell did they call that damn stuff? Uh, I don't know, some bran flakes or something in there for roughage or something. I don't know, make, make some freaking pudding and dump it over the pudding or something. I don't know. <laughs> something good. Syrup. Yeah, the glycol. Yeah, I don't know. I, I, think, I think, Ben, you were saying about not smoking the... Uh... Wait, just for the heck of it, I'll... Um... I can find it. Somebody feels like joining if you want to talk about vapes and cheap guitar equipment. Welcome to join. I don't know how vapes... Well, there we go. Vapes, hand rolling, and cheap guitars. What the heck? That all fits. 
Nico Tatches. Yeah, Nihilist, I tried that. You know, I thought it wasn't working, but the weirdest thing I noticed with it was uh, if I wore the patch at night and I fell asleep, I would uh, I would wake up with nightmares. So obviously it was doing something. <laughs> you know, <laughs> at least real weird dreams, you know. Yeah, both of my parents smoked. My dad probably quit in his 40s. I, yeah, I imagine 40s, maybe early 50s, but I bet it was 40s. And he quit and stayed quit. My mother continued to smoke, but he uh, he was able to stay off it. I quit for like 10 years smoking cigarettes. And then uh, I lived in a dry town. Then I moved to a town that wasn't dry. Bars on like freaking every block or two, you know. <laughs> and started drinking. Yeah, and I remember sitting at the bar one night, bum a couple cigarettes. After a while, I get tired of bumming, you know. I remember I went over to the machine and put a buck, buck fifty, whatever it was in there, and pulled the lever. And there I go. By the next day, I was right back to like one and a half, two packs a day. That damn fast. Unbelievable. Look up General White Portion Snus. Why? Wait, okay, okay, okay. Okay, I'll look at that. That doesn't sound good somehow. Or is it sinus? Doesn't matter. They'll find it. You know how Google is. Hmm. That's nice. What in the heck is it? Oh, snuff. What? I'm confused here. Tried that for a while, walking around with a tin can, you're spitting all the time in a can. <laughs> I don't know. Not too bad though. If I'm gonna if I'm gonna like play more country music, maybe I should go back to chewing, you know. It ain't too bad. Big big wad of tobacco too, that ain't bad. Have to start growing tobacco. What in the world, Nihilist? I got a scare. My chest started hurting and convinced myself I had a tumor and quit then. Oh, oh, from the, the patches. Well, I don't know, man. Yeah, the patches made me feel freaking weird, you know. And I think some of it, I'm not sure what a cigarette does, but vaping, it, it doesn't hit me quick. And obviously patches, it's like a slow buildup and it just hangs there. So I don't really feel that. I think I actually like the rush of you take a puff and it just right into your lungs and bam, it's right hits your blood system like really quick. And I think that's what cigarettes offers me that I don't get from a cigar. Don't get it from a pipe. I don't know. But cigarettes are like nails in your coffin. Yeah, there won't be any freaking wood left to nail into by the time I'm done. You know, <laughs> there's so many damn nails. Wonder what does happen if I just take this rest of the cigarette. I wonder what it'll do. Throw that in my pipe. Edge of the filter and everything. You know, I'll stick it with the, the burning part down first. There you go. That way, because the heat rises, right? So it should ignite it. And I probably have to 
light it again. I figured. Hmm. I wonder if it'll taste like a paper hit. Crackling. A lot of humidity. A lot of uh, tar and stuff built up there at the end, I guess. Well, I'm starting to hear that, Sonya. Vaping equals fake news. Too funny, man. Dan Beck. <laughs> Had to quit smoking bacon. Papers kept tearing up while rolling. Yeah. Yeah, will do that. Mm -mm. Wow. Now let's say you quit within two weeks. You know, this is truly horrible tasting. Pretty bad. With a shot tobacco at the bottom. And a cigarette and the papers. Hell of a burn back on the side of my tongue. Tastes like shit. Sorry. It's true though. Whatever shit tastes like, I don't know. I do think, though, you could take dog shit. You could smash it out flat on a tray or something. Put a polyester or epoxy or whatever and glue it together and build yourself a guitar body. That, that's Will, Will Gelman's idea, though. Probably build a speaker cabinet out of that stuff. Yeah, menthol cigarettes. Yeah, I kind of like them. I stay away from them for that reason. Um, really like Newports. When Newports weren't cool, you know, they, they you know, I went from Cools to Newport. It was either Cools, Newport, or Camels. I like Camel Wides, you know. And then of course they had the Camel Menthol. They weren't too bad either. More shit Mexican cigarettes. Yeah, but I'm, I'm thinking of of making speaker cabinets out of uh, compressed uh, um, polycarbonate, whatever the hell you call that, you know. Dog shit. See you, Ben. Take care, man. Have a good day. Cow pies. There you go. Heck, you get that real cheap. Chicken uh, manure would be okay, too, to build a guitar amp out of, uh, unless you're out in the rain. I mean, that would smell real bad, from what I've, I've always noticed. Maybe mix it with some uh, Old Spice or something. You can buy a bottle of that for five or six bucks and pour in there with the mix. Wouldn't want to smoke it. <laughs> yeah, the Marlboro 100s, Mick. Yeah, I remember those. And they made Marlboro 100 menthols. Had that like green checkered kind of look with the chevron like sign, whatever the hell it was. Bow tie, half a bow tie sign, whatever. The Marlboros. So, anyhow, that was just basically my thing on cheap amps. You know, it's kind of funny um, to think about uh, a couple years ago. It's, oh, it's been a number of years now. I sold a. Uh, Kind of a rough looking uh, amp. The tweed was really rough. An old Fender Champ. You know, it's funny how many people actually use them, you know. Now, you know, I have like a 70s Champ, you know. And that amp actually sounds really good mic'd up. And they, they aren't cheap like they used to be. I mean, you could buy them for nothing years ago. But, you know, I mean, considering that that was the kind of amp you wouldn't use live or anything generally, uh, although I'm mic'd up, I think it sounds fine live. Little eight inch speaker, whatever. It's, it's kind of funny, though. I mean, that, no, and then that is a world of difference from the, uh, the, the plastic uh, mid range focused uh, solid state two inch speaker to Dumble knockoff. I mean, hell, there's a good nihilist right there. He was ready. He sold his 54 Strat and his Dumble. Go out and buy this rig, you know. It sounded more dumble like than the dumble. 
more more mid focused, you know. But anyhow, it's just kind of funny though that uh, there are amps that are probably pretty cheap that sound okay, you know. I'm sure, and I'm sure there's a lot of stuff to look at solid state wise that sound pretty damn good uh, for around a hundred bucks or so. I would think. In fact, I'm very convinced that you can do that. And guitars, well, I don't know. You know, I guess, you know, I'm saying all that, but as far as cheesy components that are going to break and, and, of course, the quality of tone isn't there. I, I, I definitely realize this, but to your more uh, desirable amps that people love, you know, I mean, I understand it's not the same, but they're usable is kind of my point. And although the cheap stuff, like I was going to say, is a, they're going to have cheap components and uh, switches and jacks and stuff's going to break easy if it doesn't burn up inside, whatever, you know. <laughs> you know? And the guitars, I mean, you got the cheapest of tuners, the cheapest of pickups and potentiometers and switches and jacks and anti-tone wood material and green freaking wood on the freaking necks with knots and shit in it and everything else and misplaced frets and yeah <laughs> but you still play them though that's the thing they still work certainly i think that the chiso chiso guitars some weird ways they were made better in the 60s like from japan even though that i was drunk you know in my mind it was all junk In some ways, though, they were made better than some components, some, and some of the new stuff. But, you know, like on that Strat thing I was playing, like, you know, you just lock the dang tremolo down and say the hell with it, you know. I'm not even going to, not that you can't, you can make it work, but because of the pot metal and everything, I mean, it, it, the tremolo bar usually will strip it out and the thing will crack, whatever, I don't know. You just lock the dang thing down is my thought. Play it, try to make it work, you know. You know, and you level the frets and do your basic things. And yeah, the frets are probably in place pretty good. You know, it's just, you know, there, there's more, yeah, cheap stuff like that for a hundred bucks or so. What can you expect? There's going to be certain things that aren't perfect. Like a Gibson. No, I'm <laughs> kidding. You know, but it is playable. That's all I was getting at. Bart, what's happening? Okay, here we go. I have to do the famous George thing before I go. One more cigarette. What time is it? It's almost 3 o'clock. My nose is itching. Something about 3 o'clock. I don't know what caused that. I feel like a witch. Now, at the, at the end of my hangout, I have to mention that something I was thinking about today, just for the hell of it, bounce it off you guys. I, I know that, you know, we, we all saw plenty with the uh, Nick Sandman, Sandman, I guess his name is. Um, Catholic boy wearing the MAGA hat, you know, where the black Hebrew uh, Israelites were calling him Cracker and everything else. I think they even called a black guy within the group a Cracker or something. Hell, I don't know. They're all kinds of freaking crap, you know. Giving them a really rough time. But, you know, that's how some of those guys can be. And, you know, uh, it had to have been black guys. And you had the KKK there. You probably would have had similar things going that way, too. But, but, but the black Hebrew Israelites are really notorious for this. Uh, certain groups of them, you know, can be pretty rough. So they're giving a pretty bad time. American Indian guy, in my opinion, has nothing to do with American Indians, except that he just happens to be an American Indian acting like an idiot, you know, going up and chanting and banging a drum in his face with another guy beside him banging a drum in his face. No wonder the guy had a shitty grin, you know. Um, I mean, holy heck. Freaking nuts. Just walk right up there in front of him and just keep banging and chanting at him and expecting him to move or something or I don't know what he expected. Is it that you wouldn't by chance call it harassment now, would you? Um but the news so they just got the picture of the kid's face, you know, like like he was attacking. And even when the guy was interviewed, the Indian guy 
he forgave him. He's trying to forgive him. You know, that kind of thing. It's like, you freaking moron. He was harassing the kids, you know. Anyhow, so with all the new stuff, I see that they're suing the guy. But all the fake news. Talk about fake news. That was unbelievable. But, you know, something I always thought was interesting was that did get news coverage. And, of course, the major networks try to play it down. And what about Clockboy, though? You know, I, I always go back to that. You talk about fake news. Clock Boy, the kid who had the little bomb thing built in. Uh, oh, no, it wasn't a bomb. It just happened to be a little briefcase, a little metal box. with, uh, And you opened it up, and there were batteries and a clock and stuff in it or whatever. And Yeah, you know, it was supposed to look like a clock, you know, he was building. You know, and his uncle owned uh, Twin Towers Transportation Corporation or something like that. And uh, his dad was uh, pretty radical on... Uh, the radical Islamic kind of thing and running and different things, trying to be president of some Islamic country. And the sister got caught for similar kind of bullshit, whatever. And I don't know. Like, but the news, no, oh, no, 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 man. General, no, it couldn't have been bad. No, no. And Obama invited him to the freaking White House. Uh, I think Microsoft sent him all kinds of computer gear. Like a whole bunch of people sent him all kinds of stuff. You know, they felt so bad for this poor kid. When it was a freaking setup. Total setup. You never heard a whole hell of a lot about it either. I mean, it, a little bit of flash here and there in the, on the news, but generally it was overlooked. You can look it up today. Look up Clock Boy. It'll show up. Um, should. Clock Boy. Unbelievable. How in the hell do you take some kids, you know, kids wearing MAGA hats, Make America great again. Can't have that. That's racist for sure. But how in the hell can you have those kids out there pretty well behaving themselves from what I could see? Not saying they're perfect angels or anything, but they seem pretty good, especially compared to what was going around them, going on around them. And you have these guys banging drums and shit. Bam, 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 like a freaking Energizer buzz bunny while chanting at them, walking into them. And yet they were guilty. It's just strange when I look back at the clock boy and just kind of compare them to get, you know, it's, it's a bunch of weird crap. Where the hell did the idea of fake news come from, you have to wonder. Even though I didn't agree with it, I still question the idea of it. But now it's staring me in the face. It's hard to ignore. That's my rant. Hey, take care, uh, Wild Heart. I had to go on my rant. Now that I got past the music stuff. Yeah, yeah, it's an actor, Dale. That was the whole thing. I mean, in, in both of these guys, whether it be Clock Boy or the American Indian guy, which, like I said, I, I, I don't look at it as Clock Boy as a fair representation of people who are, are Islamic. Nor do I think that this moron acting up like that is a fair representation of American Indians. But it's just amazing to me that the media got hold of it and tried to turn them into saints in both cases. Uh, unbelievable to me. Well, you know, Sonia, that's the whole damn thing. They lost their lawsuits. I don't believe in lawsuits in this kind of thing. I really don't. But I have to admit, they didn't help this freaking kid by making him look like some type of damn uh, racist, you know. And, you know, the news really did push it that way. Um You know, should they get something for it? Is that going to affect him later in his life? I don't know. I don't know. I don't think they're going to, I don't think they'll get what they're asking for, but I don't think they'll lose the case. Clockboy did, of course. Then he went to become wealthy and everything go well where he, where he moved to, and then he came back. And of course, he lost his case. What, uh, Hey, yeah, Bart, what the heck's up with that Ubuntu? You know, I was thinking recently of trying Ubuntu Studio 
mainly there's a guy I know that that wants to to try that. I wanted to help him some with it, and uh, I don't know. Dag on that sucks. So Ubuntu's done. I'm not sure. I saw something recently about Ubuntu being done or something, but doesn't uh, Mint work off Ubuntu? I don't know. I don't know. I, you know, I only look at some of it, but I really wanted something that that had a uh, a kernel and such in it that was designed for audio. And that's why I was looking at Ubuntu Studio. You have any recommendations on what? Uh, Linux distro you might want to try for music recording It's something where I don't have to know a whole lot of codes and stuff that has a nice GUI interface <laughs> Maybe that's asking too much Yeah, Jimmy T. I, I, I made I guess is the one I'm thinking of And you have the choice of cinnamon or mint as a desktop. Does that sound right? I kind of half forget, you know Studio, the Ubuntu Studio. Yeah, it seemed to have just a lot to offer from what I could see. Then there was like KX. I don't know. I have. I, I look here and there, and then I forget. Yeah, Jimmy T. I, I forget which is which. It. Uh, I did recently do a. Um, what did I put together? It was uh, something with one or two gigs of RAM. An old uh, AMT like Athlon or something, and I went with 32 bit because it didn't have enough RAM and that, and uh, and a processor probably it just probably wouldn't have really worked well with 64. And uh, I went with some real stripped down one, and I forget what the heck it was called. And actually, it ran pretty good. Not sure it was better than XP. I don't know. It ran pretty good though. XP's getting hard with drivers and that kind of thing, I noticed. A version of Windows. Oh, oh, is that, Sonia, is that the one that they built on 98 or something? I saw something about a version of Windows 98. Because one of the things I noticed was I, I downloaded, um, the heck is it now, uh, Caden Live, I guess, to do videos. And there were certain programs it needed to uh, put in there first. I don't know if program is the right word. Uh, I can't think of what the heck you want to call it. Drivers or whatever the hell it had to set up first. It needed these different little things added to it. And when I went to add them... It wouldn't accept them. It kept saying that I uh, couldn't make a connection or something or I needed to turn on my internet when everything else was working. So I'm not really sure what was up with that. Or that's where I got thinking maybe something that uh, already has a kernel in it that should give you less latency, hopefully. And uh, the programs are already pre-installed or known to easily install i just thought that might be a better route to go than trying to turn a distro that's not specifically designed for music you know my thought anyhow i might be wrong probably depends a lot on how much you actually know that i know that i know pretty well that i don't know much I know that some of us were talking about, uh, like, the Hackintoshes, whether, you know, they'll fade away, you know, and it, it's kind of interesting looking at that, though. It, it, 
It's hard to say, you know. I mean, it it possibly could go another five, ten years. They'd be good. I don't know. I don't know. One thing that, that frustrates me with Windows is about the time you get everything working right and you put it on the internet, you know, you can get nailed with something that almost seems. And then if you uh, run, an, you know, anti-spyware programs or whatever, or, you know, antivirus or whatever, then it dogs down the machine. Maybe, maybe just load it and get rid of everything and then shut it down. I don't know. And then recently I found out that uh, with Windows 7, I could upload, update it to Windows 10. But if you do that, then you lose uh, your authenticity of Windows 7. And apparently they're only going to support 7 for another year or something like that. So, I don't know. I kind of like 7. I'm not sure that I want to move to 10. Yeah, that's a good idea with the raid thing. It's supposed to show up in the mail today. Somewhere today I've got uh, some type of uh, it's a USB 3.0. Um, what the hell do you call it? External drive thing that you can just plug the hard drive right into it and unplug it and plug it back in, whatever. And it's going to get dual ones, but this one sits flat, so if you're less chance of knocking it over, which with all this junk laying around here, that'd be easy enough to do. But it'd be nice to be able to just be able to put backups on and then just put the hard drive away. Save it that way. That way it's not sitting in my machine running all the time. Yeah, Jimmy T, I agree about avoiding certain websites, but honest to goodness, I mean, I, I'd be straight up. I mean, I don't look at porn. I'm too fucking old. Excuse me. No, <laughs> I think I am. I have no, no, I never. Well, I did probably have an interest in it when I was younger, you know, but no, for many, many, many years. Yeah, I, I don't look at anything like that. Um, I have occasionally looked at websites, at software, and you'll be porn all over that, flying around and stuff, you know, so I don't know, maybe, you know, whatever. Holy act. I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> all my computers run Windows 7 except for one old XP machine. Yeah, I can't blame you there. Yeah. I was amazed, man, on this. Uh, it's a Pentium 4 with a real cool Intel board. Like it was a high end Intel board. And um, what the heck did I put in it? Is it four 1 gig sticks or four 512s? You know, I forget what's... I'm, somehow I'm thinking there's four gigs of RAM in it. But I think it can only read three anyhow. I don't know. Whatever. It's two or four gigs. And it's a 3.4 uh, processor. And I swear I could be off. I think that processor had somewhere around eight or 12 megs of cache. At any rate, it, it was mind-blowing to me running uh, XP on a thing. That damn thing ran pretty good. It does run pretty good. It's sitting there. It's not too bad. <laughs> Nihilist, I'm all over the porn channels on YouTube. I've seen your comments. Yeah, right. <laughs> well, guitar porn, yeah. Yeah, I, I have a tough time with guitar porn. With honey tones and squire guitars or anything in competition with that, you know. And that's usually where I get caught up in the guitar porn. Swamp ash body tellies, that could get me. Or maybe a swamp ash body uh, Les Paul with P90s, that could get me too. Or mini humbuckers. 
thinking about I got a set of mini humbuckers making a I don't think I'll put them in my computer, Windows or whatever. No, but I am thinking of trying uh, mini humbuckers again. Just to see how they pull off that kind of strat, kind of. Maybe put Alnico 8s in them. I don't know. Alnico 5 or 8. I know they'll be bright, but I just wonder how close it would come to a fender -y kind of sound. You know, almost a single coil. Supposed to be wound with 42 gauge wire, and they're wound somewhere around 6K, so should be fairly bright. I remember them being bright. I just haven't used them in a while, but in one of my T90 guitars, I'm thinking I'd like to try that, you know, the mini humbuckers. Oh, there you go. A USB to one quarter guitar cable that came with GarageBand. Yeah, you know, GarageBand, uh, it's kind of tempted. Uh, I've got a uh, IK Media or whatever the hell it is. It's a uh, Pro 2 Duo or whatever they call that thing. I don't know. It's two channels in, you know, and apparently that thing doesn't work too well with regular computers. At least there's a lot of complaints about it. But I know it worked okay with the phone. Kind of half tempted to try using my phone. Just to do a recording to see how it turns out while I'm on the cheap stuff, you know. I don't know. And, and GarageBand's free, so maybe I should try it. I made one. Heck, I think it's even laying around down here somewhere on the freaking floor. I did make one one time that, uh, I don't know. Yeah, the cables are laying down here somewhere all over. Jacks and stuff I put together so that I could plug my guitar right into my phone. But things really, it really didn't sound right. You'd get like weird hot pitch squeals and odd stuff, depending on how high your volume was. And I forget what all the issues were. Great for the tuner. And it did record sound, but but the uh, the IK whatever the hell the thing's called, the um, it definitely sounded uh, better, yeah, a whole lot better. I mean, it sounded really pretty good. Oh, Dell, yeah, I I don't know how many guitar pickups I have, honestly, you know. Um, something I should probably put everything, something I should clean up. That'd be a freaking thing to do. And you just take pictures of, <laughs> I don't know, go around, and like pickups. There, there might be 75, 100, more than 100, I don't know. I got a lot of pickups, you know. Um, a lot of old parts, you know, just, just weird stuff and necks and bodies and whatever you know i there's a guy who lives locally they're fairly close i was telling him one day come by and i don't know we'll build a guitar or something just grab parts and throw something together you know something to do i haven't felt like doing it but if somebody was here that would enjoy it you know by chance it'd be fun to do Yeah, the P90 is magical. The only thing that drives me nuts is a freaking hum. I I keep saying I want to do it, and I probably never will, but I, I want to try making some... And I just wonder how thick a wire you could use for the reverse coil, you know, the, the coil, the hum-canceling coil, you know, because the thicker the wire you use, uh, the less high frequency you, you'd lose. So... I really wonder how thick a wire you can use. You know, maybe even put it down in the control cavity. You know, you'd have more room there. And then just wire, you know, make each pickup so that they were, uh, they weren't hum canceling when they were in the middle, but you just have one quill for one pickup or the other. That, that might work good.
Uh oh, my cigarette's done. I'm not gonna throw it back in my pipe. That was pretty freaking bad. Behringer mix desk. <laughs> it's so dirty, it's great for metal sounds. It's funny. I was watching something with Rick Beato recently saying about how, like, if you add a little bit of distortion to certain things in a mix, how it helps it pop out. I don't know why exactly, and maybe it depends on what kind of distortion, but interesting. Well, Dale, you know, like Dale Palmer was saying, I imagine anything you do to cancel the P90 hum will take away that unique sound. I, I'd agree, um, but, you know, when I, when I look at Kenman and DiMarzio with the, uh, the coil underneath, the reverse wound coil, I'm not really sure how they do it. I mean, heck, I don't even know if the, the, the coil is in series or parallel. And from one pickup to the other, it came in and DiMarzio. But apparently DiMarzio owns the uh, copyright to it or whatever, um, the patents. But so, so I guess, you know, without, without taking it to pick up a part and, and uh, seeing what quill goes to what and how it's built, I should do that really and just get an idea of what they're doing. You know, I mean, they could be using 43, 44 gauge wire or something, and then running it in parallel. Then you'd get a lower reading. But it, I, I, I'm thinking, six, six, I don't know, I have to think about how they're doing that. You know, I don't know. Hey, Arthur. Yeah, noise gate. Yeah, that's pretty nice. Good idea. Kind of funny. I think the only noise gate I have laying around here is in a rack. I bet if I take it apart, it's probably all the parts are real small. I don't even know what the hell it is. If it's even here, it's an old rock drawing. I don't know. It's an old rock drawing hush. And it's dual, so I could double it up twice the amount. <laughs> I don't know. There, there probably is an advantage. I think about it. I wonder if you could run, uh, well, just having one between your guitar, but I wonder if there'd be any advantage of having one in between your preamp and your output stage on it, like in an effects loop. I don't know. Never looked into that. But I should probably hook it up, though, to my guitar. Probably would help a lot. Well, now that Arthur's here... I'll throw a link in if by chance somebody wants to join quick because I'm, I'm probably going to take off in a couple minutes. I think the last thing I copied and pasted was this snuff stuff. Um, oh, geez, Suey. Time's getting to be 3 o'clock. I'm okay for a couple minutes. I'm going to take off in about, holy heck, well, I am out of uh, cigarette tubes, that's bad, maybe that's good. this a try. Hmm. Tobacco is a little dry. Smells good. Speaking of, it's got a little bit of English blend mixed with some cheap tobacco. All right, tastes okay though.
Mm. Yep, yep. Yeah, that does help me. Yeah, maybe maybe I will try to switch to this more. Hmm. Can't find my dang tamper off the probably get arrested for having resins on the daggone uh, end of my needle nose wire right now. Hello, Dave Ennis. Uh-oh, out of fluid, too. Burn the old nostrils. Speaking of clock boy, there we go, Sonya. Yeah, no, now that's that's freaking worth talking about. Hell with cheap amps. They set the Jesse Smollett bail at one hundred thousand. The actor that suffered from the fake attack in Chicago. Hmm. Oh, that, yeah, geez, Zooey, that's unbelievable. That, that was freaking unbelievable. What the hell? You know, you know, you know, I, <coughs> I'm coughing up all those cigarettes. I Man, I better stop that. Um, forgot about that freaking ordeal. That was totally ridiculous. I mean, and stuff that the news like says about how horrible the all these people are. It, it's division. I'm not saying there's not division created on the right ever, but the left is doing a hell of a good job if that's what they're attempting to do. I mean, the idea is supposed to all get along as people and see one another as people. But, but uh, that's <laughs> whatever. Holy heck. Uh, but the, the fake news thing, you know, I kind of like, I think it was a bad idea. Trump went on about fake news on and on and on. But then you look at this. I guess he was right. Now, you know, I watch Fox and I think there's, uh, Fox says some things that I've found to not be the case. But with things I've seen that are like major, major issues, uh, Yeah, I mean, and you'll have not just one network, but three or four, whatever it is, that just going viral with this crap. You know, you just turn on the TV, and it's like, huh? and, and and then tons of commentary on it. <laughs> it's just unbelievable. That's fake news, and and uh, massive amounts of it. I don't know how they can screw up so freaking bad. Mm. Yeah, Paul's country. Yeah, I agree. Naphtha works good. Um, the thing that uh, I found really frustrating is I, I used to buy Coleman's camp fuel, and I still do see it here and there. But, uh, you know, I checked with uh, Lowe's and Home Depot, and they didn't have it. It's really weird. Um, and I don't know why. Um I mean, that stuff was just, uh, it was really cheap, you know. It lasted you a year or two. But you're right, yeah, a can of naphtha can probably buy cheaper, which is probably more pure than the Coleman. I don't know, the Coleman works okay. I, I do have some uh, Ronson. But that would mean I'd have to get up, get my fat ass off of this chair, you know. Hey, look at that. It did fire up now. Yeah, it's, it's, it's pretty low. I might get one or two more lights out of it.
Now, daggone it, Arthur. Now you're going to make me want to go get a cigarette. Oh, shit. I, I'm supposed to... Okay, I'll give myself 15 more minutes, if that. But I'm going to go get a cigarette. I'll be right back. Now I got to talk about the freaking flat earth. I always have to talk about everything. All right, we'll have to get on the flat earth in a minute. No oh, freaking Christmas today. God gone it. Multiple box packaging opening. Fuck the flat earth. Oh, excuse me. I always start the crazy shit at the end. I should put this at the beginning. Fucking. Well, who the hell cares about this? This is a freaking amplifier here. I'd probably make an amplifier better than that last one out of it. Let's see what the heck this thing is. Probably doxed myself. Yeah, fuck it. Now if I dox myself, well then you're welcome to come here and say hi. Box inside of box. Probably all it is boxes inside of boxes. I'm so damn excited I didn't even light my cigarette. Well, it's got a sleeve there. Hey. Come on, get out of there. Fuck. I, I, I am sort of a prick. I mean, I even get pissed off at my own fucking boxes. I can't, get, can't excuse my French. Fuck. No, seriously, this fucking thing won't... Like, what'd they do? Glue the freaking sleeve on here? I don't know. There's got to be another way to open it. Yeah, I try to like save the box. Dang, going on. now you get my freak. Can't find my glam glass. Oh, here we go. No Chinese Zippo lighters. <laughs> I don't have any Chinese Zippos. Yeah, I'd like to not destroy this box in case. There we go. Shove my knee into it. Ah, very cool. There we go. Okay, I managed to open it without destroying it. And I guess the question will be, will the thing even work? Now they seal this stuff better than they do our food. That's basically it. Oh boy. Let's see. No, I don't have a hard drive nearby. But this because this one has rails on it, but yeah, it slip right in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Guaranteed to be faster than a three and a half inch floppy. And you got uh, power supply. 
pretty light for the amperage we claim it has. I don't know. We'll see. So, my understanding is you can use it with the small, like, what, two and a half inch, whatever they are, laptops or three and a half inch full size SATA drives. Now I'm excited. Okay, so what the heck else was there oh, on this? I never get to the flat earth thing. Because that doesn't seem right that YouTube is banning the truth. I mean, how can you shut the truthers up when they're offering the truth? The earth is flat. Here we freaking go. I never thought this would be here this fast. All the way from Chinatown or somewhere. Yeah, Kingston Data Traveler. How exciting. I, I can tell you this works wonderfully. It's freaking great. It's the very best. Uh, the only thing that's been better is... Well, 128 or 256 or 512 but for 64 gigabyte like around 10 15 bucks or whatever it was uh pretty cool 3.0 yeah life's gonna be easier now than than playing with my like old uh, four and uh eight and a few uh like i don't know what do i have uh 500 megabytes and 256 whatever else sticks it out laying around here so damn antiquated. Okay, there's now the flat earth. Okay, this, that was my unboxing. Now that damn uh, damn storage unit there uh, costs more than some amplifiers. Okay, so the flat earth. So anyhow, it, are we convinced? Is it absolutely? Um, <laughs> there's a new 90 minute movie on Netflix about flat earth crazies. I, I have to watch that. You know. I will talk about being cheap. That's nice. Well, is that like especially paid Netflix or like the budget Netflix? Hopefully, it's on the budget Netflix. You know. Um. The uh, the thing is, though, with the flat Earth, it, it kind of reminds me of the uh, oh, what the hell is his name? Uh, Dag on. Uh, I don't know. He's a famous guy that was it shut down uh, a bit ago, censored, whatever. Uh, Alex Jones. Look, you know, I mean, I always save all the bullshit for the end of my hangouts anyhow. Tried to, at least to cover the guitar stuff before I got here to this garbage. Got to refill my lighter, but that was a pretty weak. <laughs> it's barely working. You can spray some cologne on there and keep it going, though, for a little bit. But anyhow, the flat earth thing. Um, and Alex Jones, like, you know, with Alex Jones and Sandy Hook, that was really mean, man. I mean, I, you know, really, seriously. I What he did... And I think that freaking Charlie Stone guy was part of it. And I, I have no respect for Charlie Stone. Guilty or not guilty, whatever the hell his deal is. Well, they should be honest in what they nail him for or don't nail him. Whatever the hell they're doing, you know. But I have no respect for, for that guy. Uh, when I say Charlie, whatever the hell his name is, something Stone. Uh, Roger Stone. Roger Stone. I have no freaking uh, respect for a guy that was tied in with the damn uh, bullshit with Alex Jones and that stupid group. But I don't know that it was right to make it that he, he couldn't uh, speak. I, although, I mean, I guess if some networks just say they don't want that bullshit. Uh, yet the same networks probably had no problem with Clock Boy or this freaking last thing with the MAGA hats, you know. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> Oh, I don't know. What a freaking mess. But the flat earth, so I guess I like both sides of the flat earth. Yeah, I like the crust and I like the cheese. Just so it's like golden golden brown, but, but not necessarily burnt. 
you know that's the way i like my pizza I don't really want any toppings either. I just want a good crust, which, generally speaking, you're only really going to find in a real Italian pizza shop. And sauce made with passion from a real Italian pizza shop and real cheese. What the hell more can you ask for? Uh, so... Okay, so the, it's absolute. YouTube channel has announced that one of the things they're banning soon is Flat Earth. Well, YouTube channel has announced it. So there's, I didn't even know this. There's actually a YouTube, YouTube channel. Um, yeah, well, that's where you get into like the extreme censorship. And I suppose it, it's... For, for me, it, it's it's kind of tough because when I look at Alex Jones, I think, well, that was uh, – there, there were things there that were said that just aren't true, and they were screwing up people's lives. Yeah, you know, really, the, the parents, the family members of the kids who died, they don't need to hear that shit that it was fake and all that. It's not really right. You know, I mean, honestly, it's not fair. The flat Earth. I mean, it's just it, it, it's 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 it, it, oh my god. You know what I can't get? A friend of mine uh, married a lady. Well, anyhow, and but uh, she was really smart. You know, she was a uh, real religious lady. Um, super super freaking smart. I mean, as far as knowing and all the weird stuff of. Alistair Crowley and everything else outside of that and who wrote this book and that book and what was in it and what the lady was almost 90 some percent on on everything I'd look at you know the Sandy Hook stuff though amazingly she fell for her. and the flat earth like conspiracy theories it was always it's always odd to me that somebody that was that damn smart could fall for all this conspiracy bullshit how the hell can you be that damn smart and be so fucking stupid at the same time Seriously, I just don't understand it. You know, I really just don't get it. Dave and Ike, yeah, it's like, holy hell. I mean, how do people fall for this freaking crap? Freaking reptilians and stuff walking around, whatever. <laughs> I don't know. It used to just be the AM radio, but now, of course, we have the internet. Maybe that's why we do see censoring. Well, and Sonia, see, that's the funny thing is, it, it's sure, Alex Jones would be funny, but, you know, I look at it like porno, like I just don't have an interest in it. Although, like porno would be maybe, <laughs> no, but the point is, I just don't have, <laughs> I, I just bring that up because I remember somebody saying they don't have any, porn, never mind, on their computer. Um, so, anyhow, the problem with Alex Jones to me is that, you know, you, you give kid free reign of a computer. You know, at a certain age, you say, here, just go ahead, you know. Um, sure, you're going to catch them areas you'd wish they weren't at. But, you know, it's part of life. That's what's going to happen. But you sure as hell don't need them learning, or, or old people, or just people that can't fucking reason. I'm sorry. Uh, like the intelligent person I was just talking about that can't understand the earth isn't flat. The... You just don't need that, you know. So I think if a company decides we don't want that bullshit on our, in our media, or, you know, that what, what we are putting, we, you know, speaking of them, how they might see it, here we have this platform. We don't want this kind of garbage being taught. I can't really blame them, you know. Uh, I, I wouldn't doubt that there's some really nasty things that have come about with flat earthers. I mean, you look at just how freaking Tonewood got here in the guitar community. Um, flat earthers, I think are much more serious. And, they, and you know, the, some of them, uh, you know, some are, uh, 
not religious. Some are religious. will tie it in with that. And of course, they're already radically minded or whacked out in the head. I, I mean, to believe that Jesus existed and there's something there. And however far somebody wants to go within reason, I, I, I can actually understand that. I've been there. I still look at certain things and go, wow, you know, that's, that's something, you know. Um, what is it? What is this about? You know, or is there a God, whatever, you know. I get that. The flat earth, though, I just don't get. You know, I really don't. Maybe the difference is that, you know, some things are built on questionable things. Is, to, is there a God or not? You know, how did all this come about? The earth, we can kind of look at, you know. But then, of course, NASA and everybody's taking pictures, cartoon pictures. So, of course, that's not true. <laughs> it just gets unbelievable. Flat tires are real. Yeah, even the Flintstones didn't have flat tires. Well, it depends on I me mean, if you're driving. Well, you can drive on flat tires. I've done it. Um, I had an old Datsun that uh, I camouflaged and uh, put four snow tires on it, drove it around in the mud and snow, whatever, anything I could find crashed it in the trees and stuff to see how it would do and uh i do remember uh when i'd be flying around turns and stuff i would uh the tires would pop off the rim and then they go flat and so eventually i put tubes in it that's how i done fixed it i put tubes in there maybe i should have drilled holes and uh, screwed the uh, freaking tires to the rim i don't know but anyhow I, I was always afraid that the tire would push off and the tube would squeeze out and pop i never had that happen the tubes did definitely work so yeah, I had fun. And that's no flat earth bullshit. That's just having fun, enjoying life, being an idiot, you know, jumping it and flying around stuff and getting stuck in ditches and stuff. I mean, that's fun. The flat earth, I just don't really understand how the hell that's fun or anything, what it has to offer. Yeah, Jimmy T, if you're talking about Alex Jones, yeah, there you go. I mean, it's so young. Yeah, I, I just have no time for it. And then I'd look at... Uh, all the crazy vitamins and weird crap and stuff to be selling at the end of the like screw this you know I, I i guess to me it it gives uh being a conservative or being a republican it gives it a really bad name i i just don't really want anything to do with that you know uh, i i personally take offense to it But, but if they, you know, but the problem is, though, if they make it to flat earthers can express their thoughts, that doesn't seem right. I'm probably going to take off because I could smoke 10 more cigarettes instead of actually talking about this, you know, because I see the point that YouTube might see, but it doesn't seem right, you know, to me. I mean, unless they're making threats or doing something there, maybe they, they are finding things like that going on. That's what I was kind of getting at earlier. Maybe maybe it gets really way out of control. I don't know, but to ban it. Mm. Okay, so I guess my point is, the, I brought up Alex Jones with the uh, the Sandy Hook thing. And really, flat earthers usually have a whole bunch of other weird conspiracy crap going, you know, but maybe that's part of the issue. I don't know. But, I mean, who the hell cares if they think the earth is flat or not? They're freaking nuts, whatever, you know. My opinion. Um, it's a lot different, I think, than saying that Sandy Hook didn't happen. You know, that, that really hurts people. The flat earth, I don't know that that really hurts people. It just shows how fragile the human mind is. You know, and that's a shame, but it's maybe something we should look at now and then that, uh, you know, if you don't uh, fact check, you know, and uh, try to think rationally about things, uh, you're... Some very intelligent people get caught up in some really screwball thinking, you know. Tap your foot. You know, when I want, hey, there you go. When I want a cigarette, just tap my foot. <laughs> <clears throat> 
It's not even funny anymore after watching Shani for Christ. She does that shit for real. Well, there we go. So I'll read Dale Palmer's point. This, this is, I think, a very valid point. It will be a shame if YouTube, Facebook, and other social media avenues make it impossible to express opinions that don't follow the norm. And that's true, you know. Um, that's a shame. I mean, I mean, really. I mean, if, if it's not something that's hurting people, yeah, you could say, well, the flat earth hurts kids. It hurts people that are weak-minded or drawn into, like, weird things, you know. But, like I said, I mean, I, I think on the other hand, it, it, it also allows people to uh, hopefully build a stronger uh, wall around their world. And at least uh, it filters out, maybe a filter, a stronger filter, you know, like filtering illegal immigrants in, you know. <laughs> no, so that you, you know what is and what isn't, you know, that you actually think about it, you know, and. You think, freaking think, study, you know, like, and don't just study to prove your point, but I mean, actually study to see what's real and what's not, you know, and, uh, you know, you can't walk around in the world thinking that NASA is evil, that uh, the church is evil, that, uh, you know, uh, this book and that book and this TV show and NPR is evil and CBS is evil and Fox is evil. I mean, you should be able to look at all of it. And uh, take a look at Snopes, of course. They're run by the, the liberals, you know, whatever. <laughs> yeah. I think it's important to be able to look at these things and filter things out and decide and, and hopefully come up with something that's uh, at least relatively rational, you know. But to just cut it off that there's nothing irrational, or, I don't know, now, now you don't really have anything to compare the, the craziness, you know. You know, I don't know, maybe craziness has its place, you know? Just a thought. Well, anyhow, hey, Rob, what's happening? I feel kind of bad. I'm going to probably take off when you just got here. Yeah, yeah, well, Rob, I agree with you that a whole lot have done a whole lot worse. The difference I'd see is probably that Alex Jones hits a whole, whole, whole lot more people than most, a lot of these others, you know, would be my guess. And I would say that, that what he did, uh, what they did there with that, with uh, Sandy Hook was particularly tragic and a very bad ordeal. And I think that caused him a hell of a lot of problems, you know. Oh, uh, well, you know. All right, let, me, let me put it straight before I go. Fake news. That, that's my freaking point. And the president that, that I voted for, he was big on fake news. And Alex Jones is fake news. And, uh, you know, might as well get real, you know. Uh, oh, well. Anyhow, man. He'd take off, Rob, when you just got here. But uh, got to roll. Hope everybody has a good day. Stay away from the fake news. Or, no, nah, maybe we should watch. Yeah, watch fake news. And we need to make up our own minds. Maybe, maybe that's the deal, you know. Don't know if it should all be censored. You know, unless it's really hurting somebody. You know. What the hell? A little fake news maybe has its place. All right. Take care.